Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We are measuring force. Well, actually we are measuring strain. With a strain gauge. Last time we talked about the Wheatstone's bridge yeah, for measuring differences in resistance. These were our findings there. Yeah? We had a little Wheatstone bridge. I said usually it's drawn like this, however I've drawn like this to show you a little bit. We calculated here, we derived the formula which we ended up here. So the output voltage is reflecting uh, the change of the of resistor 1, the change of resistor 4 positively and the, the, those two changes for 3 and 2 negatively. Huh? This was this always compared to the original value, this delta R was just a little tiny change. Well, I rewrote this here, just wrote it here. Yeah? And if you remember the strain gauge, there we said, okay, strain gauge, this means delta R compared to R equals this factor multiplied by the strain of the material, or by the gauge actually, but by the strain. Okay? And if I combine those two things, yeah, then I would end up in a situation where we have the output voltage compared to the input voltage is proportional to K divided by 4, yeah, and then epsilon 1, if we have the first, if the first one is replaced with a with a strain gauge, yeah, minus epsilon two, whatever strain this strain gauge is measuring, minus epsilon three, whatever strain this gauge is measuring, plus epsilon four, whatever strain this gauge is is, is measuring. All right. So this is how the strains of the different objects, of the different gauges, yeah, is reflecting. If I'm not replacing all of them, yeah, so if, if uh, I'm only replacing uh, one, yeah, then we end up that all those terms here are zero, because these delta r's are zero, if they are constant, right? And we only measure the strain of one element. Good. So, Let's assume this case. Uh, let's assume this case I only do R1. Uh, then we have here let's draw it. I draw it again the classical way. Here we have, would have the output voltage. Here we have the supply voltage. So here we are, here we have U0. Here we have UA. This is what is measured. And the, this here is R2, R3, and R4. Those are constant. And R1 I'm replacing now with a strain gauge. All right? So I am, I do like this, I connect here, I will draw here a little resistor as well, why we will see. And here, this one, this is the strain gauge, so R1 is a function of epsilon. Okay. This is how this looks like. Huh? So actually what we are measuring is the change of this and with the change of this, delta 1 divided by 1 with the change of this, I can measure this epsilon 1 and my output voltage is reflecting the strain of this strain gauge. Good. But problem. It is not only reflecting the strain of the strain gauge. Here we have resistors, yeah? wire resistors, 
RW. Uh, wire resistors. Those wire resistors already change if there is no no strain at all. It is already changing the, the, the value of the resistance. So I'm measuring already strain uh, even if there is no strain, if, if there is no force. Oh yeah. yeah! Just because I have those wire resistances here. Yeah? These are causing a virtual virtual uh, delta one, delta R one. Okay. What to do? Yeah? So this this thing here is called two wire circuit. RW is influencing the measured value. This is not that pleasant, right? I make now a little trick. Look at that. I do almost the same. So here we have R R3 again. Here we have R4 again. Here again we have this U0. Here we have the connection. Here this is R2. All of them are fixed. Yeah? And I do make now a little thing different. Yeah? So here we have U0. Here we have UA, which is reflecting. And now I make the following thing. Yeah? I again, here's again the resistance of the, of the wire, of course. Yeah? Here is again, and here we go back. Here's also the resistance of a wire, and this time, I am here. Yeah? What I do with this end? I go also here. There's also the resistance of the wire. And connect it to here. Okay. So here I have wire resistance. This is gaining this resistance. Yeah? This is R1 again. And R1 is a function of epsilon because it's a strain gauge. Yeah? Here we also have a wire. However, this wire uh, resistance here is already in the branch of R2, and the branch of R2 is negative. So if this and this wire is at the same size, this and this at the same size, this virtual changes, and they are compensating each other. Yeah? They are compensating each other because simply this is in the R1 branch and this is in the R2 branch. So they are compensating each other. And if the, if the wire has the same length, they are compensating perfectly. Yeah? Why is this RW here not really influencing? Because this is there. This is there. Yeah? However, there is no current. Yeah? There is almost no current because here there is a voltage measuring device and the voltage measuring device with a high, 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 high input resistance. So there is almost no current running. So there will be no voltage drop or something like this. This really does not, there's no, not much influence from this. Okay. So this is with a simple trick. I only have one uh, strain gauge. Yeah? I'm not using two or something like this. Yeah? I'm only using one strain gauge with this simple trick. And the so-called three-wire circuit we is compensating each other. Alright? Because this is negative, this is this is here and this is negative, so good. Mm -hmm. So we really measure now the strain of this. Okay, we really measure now the strain of this. However, what is the issue? What is strain? 
Strain is the deformation of a material. Yeah? So this strain is not only a function of, of mechanical stress, it's also a function of the temperature, because we have heat extensions and so on. If a material is getting hotter, it will stretch a little bit. And I would also measure heat. Yeah? So there's also influencing in heat. The temperature is also influencing this. Not only the mechanical stress. So, ooh, yeah? so there is no there is no mechanical load or something like this at all. Yeah? And I am already measuring some mechanical forces just because it is getting warmer or colder. Does not really matter. Yeah? Who, how to deal with this? Yeah? How to deal with this? We make it like that. Yeah? R3 and R4. Here we have U0. Here again we have this. Here we have UA. Okay, and now the only thing which is left, which I could do is, here I connect. The strain gauge, all right? So this is R1, which is reflecting the mechanical stress and the temperature delta, okay? And here I'm mounting And other strain gauge, also a strain gauge. However, I'm putting this at the same material, same material with the same temperature, however, without mechanical stress. So I need maybe somewhere a little plate or something like this with the same material, which is causing then the heat strain, okay, the heat change. Yeah, so R2, there is no mechanical stress. It's just the temperature which is influencing this strain gauge. However, I have two strain gauges. And now the, the one heat is influencing this positively, yeah? and the heat here is influencing negatively the strain. So the heat is compensating each other. Right? So the heat is already compensating each other. This is called here quarter bridge, two-wire connection. This is a quarter bridge in three wire, con three wire connection. And we're also right this. Yeah? These are quarter bridges. Quarter bridge. And this is a half bridge. This is half bridge. However, the one quarter of this half bridge is only there to compensate temperature. Yeah? I will write influence of temperature is compensated. So this one is with mechanical stress. This I want to measure yeah? and temperature influence, and this one is only with temperature influence. Since this is in negative and this is in positive, it will compensate, and also the 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 wire things will also be compensated because simply we have two wires now and this is compensating automatically. Okay, so this is how strain gauges can be used to replace one, two, they can, you can replace all four of them yeah, in a certain manner, yeah, in a 
you can place all four of these strain gauges with uh, w ah, sorry, all four of these resistors with strain gauges, yeah? and then you can measure quite a lot of things. Yeah? You only have to think how to apply those strain gauges in a clever way so that you maximize your your sensitivity. Right? So the goal is always to, to bring this UA change to a maximum yeah, with the same load. Because if I have increased sensibility, I can measure smaller changes. Yeah? I can measure tinier forces. How? Now that we understand how, how this is working, yeah? next video I will explain how we can apply strain gauges in certain load cases in a clever way okay so that we we can max in, max our output application application of strain gauges next video for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye